Hello bookish people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. In today's video, we're gonna be doing my September wrap up. These are all the books that I read in the month of September. I am so sorry for the lighting, video quality, whatever is going on right now. I just, I know it doesn't look the best. I don't have my lights up. I have natural lighting from the window, but kinda not really, the sun's being weird. Um, I have no power, so you know, you make with what you do. Let's just get into my September TBR. I was hoping to get a lot read during the hurricane. I actually didn't read anything because I was just glued to my window. Like I could not look away from what was happening outside. Uh, so I really didn't read much during the hurricane, but these are all the books I read in the month of September. I don't know how many there are. I'm sure it'll be in my title. So let's get into it. Um, the first two books I want to talk about are Spy Family Volumes 1 and 2. These are the first two books I read and they're all oh, the sunshine just went away. No, I had like okay like lighting because the sunshine and it just left. Um, but we have the volumes 1 and 2 of Spy Family. So I'll tell you what the first one's about because we don't want to spoil anything it's about talking about the second one. So basically we're following our spy Twilight and his next mission, he needs to infiltrate a school to get close to his target. He's like, okay, I need to create a fake family now to get in this school. So he goes to an orphanage and he adopts Anya, who is a telepath, although he does not know she is a telepath. Um, and he adopts her. And so she knows that he's a spy. But he doesn't know that she's a telepath. Love that. So that already creates a really fun dynamic. And now he's like, okay, now I need a wife. So then he goes and he um, meets this like normal seeming lady at a, a laundromat or a seamstress somewhere. And um, she is a secret assassin, Thorn Princess. So the little girl Anya is like, oh my God, my mom's an assassin and my dad's a spy. That is super cool. But the, they, like no one knows what each other is except for the girl Anya because again she can read mine so she knows what they are but they don't know what she is and they don't know what each other are and I love it it's such a fun time I highly recommend these I like manga more than graphic novels dare I say um although this is my only experience with manga and I really have limited experience in graphic novels too the next book I read this month is a Daisy Darker by Alex Feeney I think I rated this a 4.5 stars um this book was amazing i absolutely loved it i highly recommend the audiobooks i love the narrator the ending to this book was just like jaw dropping like i just i absolutely love the ending so so much it was such a great time maybe i read it at five stars i don't know it was either a 4.5 stars or a five stars but basically you have um you're following our main character daisy and everyone is going to her grandma's house for her grandma's birthday and one by one everyone in the family starts dying it's a remote island and because of like the tide um the tide of the ocean you can't necessarily just leave whenever you want so they have to wait for the tide to change so that they can take their boat out and so while they're waiting people keep dying and it is such a fun book and it is such a the ending of this book too is so amazing i highly recommend it if you haven't read this i know this um author has some other books as well so i'm definitely going to be looking into her backlog because i was utterly obsessed with this book i think this book deserves all the hype it's going to get and all the hype it should receive 4.5 or 5 stars. I don't remember what I rated it on Goodreads. The next book I read this month, and these are in no particular order of when I read them because technically this is the first book I read this month, um, but they're just in a random pile from how I pulled them off my bookshelf. This is Book of Night by Holly Black. I'm not going to tell you anything about this book because I don't remember anything. I mean, I rated it 3 stars. Realistically, maybe I should lower that rating to a 2.5 stars because I honestly cannot tell you anything. It's about like shadow. It's like about this world where there's shadows and people rip shadows from each other. And our main character is like has gray morals. Like, she's, like you know what I mean? She's like a morally gray character. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to say. And then she has a boyfriend and there's a whole secret past with him. But I don't. I don't know you guys okay I that's all I can tell you I don't remember I was bored I didn't care I didn't particularly like it I'm probably gonna put this in my unhaul pile because just who cares and I'm never gonna read the sequel um the next book I read is Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham so this book was my December 2021 book of the month pick finally read it September 2022 almost a full year later but whatever at least it was read within a year I'm proud of that so in this book you're following our main character and her dad when she was younger was arrested um there's all these girls that were disappearing all these teenage girls and then her dad was arrested for their disappearances and he is basically a serial killer and so it's 20 years past since his arrest and now she's starting to see the same pattern of victims going missing and um actually this time though they are finding the bodies and she's like well, what is going on is there a copycat killer like 
what is happening so my dad's in prison but the same thing's happening so that is what this book's about i had a really fun time reading this although i would say like it's a very fun read and i enjoyed it and i listened to the audiobook i enjoyed the audiobook for it but i predicted the twist i predicted the twist and the ending kind of very soon on um so you know it's predictable but fun yep so if you're not looking for like an oh my god out there twist and like you're just here for a good time Yep, I would recommend it. It was fun. The next book I read was Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I love this book so, so much. So I read The Love Hypothesis in January, absolutely obsessed with it, gave it five stars. I read um, her three novellas that she came out with. I think, did I rate any of them five stars? No, I think the most I rated them, I think I rated two of them four stars and one of them a three star. I just, the novellas I just felt were too short and um, I mean they're novellas obviously they're gonna be short and I felt like I wanted more from the relationships so I was a little nervous for this one to book come out because I was expecting to give all the novellas five stars I didn't so when this came out I was expecting to give it five stars and I can happily report that I did absolutely obsessed with it so I think with Allie Hazelwood novellas for her not necessarily for me I like a full length novel okay so this book you're following our two main characters we have B and Levi and they are, they are former co, not co-workers, they're former students at the same college. Okay, I don't know, they're students, they, they know each other. They're, they're previous acquaintances. And B always thought that Levi didn't like her. And then she goes to, she gets a job at NASA and who is her supervisor, well, not supervisor, but who is her partner at NASA? Levi. And it's just a enemies to lovers romance novel. And I just love this so, so, so much. And yeah, I thought it was a fun time. I rated it five stars. I do see a lot of people say Allie Hazelwood only knows how to write one type of story, but I'm totally fine with that. I don't need her to write like anything different. Like I love the science setting. I love the enemies to lovers. Yes, I can see how people say all of her stories are very similar, but like, I don't care. I like that. I go to her for this type of story. You know what I mean? Like. If I want a sports romance, I'm not going to go to Allie Hazelwood. If I want friends to lovers, sports romance in a small town, like, no, like, I'm not going to go to her. Like, I go to her for what she does best, and what she does best, I'm always rating five stars. So, love for this. Highly recommend. The next book I read is um, Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. And, like, honestly, look how proud I am. Two September Book of the Month picks. Read, actually, in September. Like, it's what a concept what a concept reading your book of the month picks in the month you select them it's like never been done before for me i'm just waiting to have a perfect box right like the box that i pick all my picks and i read them all within the month i was so close i picked three books this month and two of them i read and one of them i got 100 pages into so and that one's gonna be a carryover into october so like it's gonna get read anyway so like i almost had a perfect box but i didn't so i'm still waiting for that month Next, I read Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. If you love The Thursday Murder Club, you'll love this book. So basically this book you're following, um, was it three or four? I think there was four. You're following four female assassins in their 60s and they are retiring from their assassin life. They go on a cruise and then they notice another assassin on board and they're like, uh, what's going on? And then they realize that the company that they were working for, the organization that they were working for, being assassins for, is now trying to kill them in their retirement. They're like, well, what is going on? They're trying to solve the mystery of why these people are trying to kill them. And then also, you know, on the run for their life. So they're going through this adventure around the world and it's just so much fun. I had such a great time reading this. I read this in one day. I listened to the audiobook for it. Again, I recommend the audiobook. Most of these I listen to on audio. Um, I recommend the audio. Such a fun time. And yeah, if you like Thursday Morning Club, you'll definitely like this book. I think I rated this four stars. The next book I read this month is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I was so excited for this book to come out because I've loved her first three previous books which books have i read daisy jones and the six love 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 five stars i've read it like three times every time is a five star experience seven husbands of evelyn hugo and malibu rising um that one i gave a four star but evelyn hugo and daisy jones i gave five stars um carrie soto is back i gave this a four stars i really enjoyed this book a lot you're following carrie and she is a tennis player and it's basically just about her life her becoming a tennis player her career 
her going into retirement and her coming out of retirement and I really enjoyed this book a lot. I loved the inside look into it's what I love about Taylor Jenkins Reid is she takes things that I absolutely do not care about and makes me care about, right? Like I don't care about tennis. I don't play tennis. Um, I don't know, like she's a fictional character. Like I, why do I care about her life? But I do because she makes her seem like such a real person. Like I wanted to Google Carrie Soto after this and watch her tennis matches even though she doesn't exist. Like Taylor Jenkins Reid has this way of just like creating these characters that feel so real and make you care about things you just like wouldn't care about. Like Malibu Rising, why do I care about like some surfer family I don't know but I do and I rated it four stars and I read it in a day same with this why do I care about Carrie Soto I don't know but I do rated it four stars an amazing experience highly recommend and I just every year just looking forward to what the new Taylor Jenkins Reid release is going to be the next book I read is A Touch of Darkness by Scar Scarlett St. Clair this book this book was not even on my radar I mean I consistently saw it at Target specifically Target I felt like is where I saw it the most and um I don't know I just never was drawn to it it's like an ugly cover I just like there is nothing about it that drew me to it I found it at a thrift store for a dollar and I was like oh that's the book I always see at Target okay I'm gonna buy it it's a dollar what the you know oh, awesome and plus I feel like I never find good romance books at the thrift store so whenever I find like a current romance or one that people are talking about online I just always buy it because I'm like it's a rare occasion right all the romance books I own I pretty much have to buy full price from Barnes and Noble or Target whatever so I am so grateful that I thrifted this book because this was a five-star read that I would have never experienced had I not found it at the thrift. This book was amazing. I absolutely loved it, but you know, I'm really not going to say more about it. Um, it's a Hades and Persephone's retelling. That's what I'm going to say because I'm going to film a video where I'm comparing a bunch of Hades and Persephone's retellings and telling you which ones are the best. I haven't finished all the books, so I can't say that this is my favorite, but I definitely read this five stars and absolutely loved it. And the next book I read is Lore Olympus of Volume 1. This kind of goes with the video I'm filming with this one, comparing all the Hades and Persephone's retellings. Um, with that one, I kind of wanted to have that video already done, but you know, hurricane got in the way. Um, so yeah, I read Lore Olympus of Volume 1. This book was so good, or this graphic novel, I should say, was so good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't say that I loved it. I read The Touch of Darkness first, and then I read this. If I had read this first, I don't know how I would have felt about it because I feel like even though these are different authors, right? They're both Hades and Persephone's, but they're kind of like different characters. You know what I mean? I felt like I already knew these characters from this book. So I felt like they already had depth from like my previous experience, even though maybe they didn't have depth necessarily if you only read this book. I don't know if that made sense. Um, but you know, I really like it. I love the quality of this book. First of all, the hardcover quality is amazing. The pages, the like art style, just everything about it is amazing. Um, but I didn't rate it a five, a five star. I don't think or did I? Did I read a four star? I don't remember. But my whole thing with graphic novels is I feel like it's really hard for me to feel very invested and care about the characters because they're just like very short and I feel like you don't get that much detail because they're just like looking at pictures. Whereas I like to get inside the characters' heads. Like in books, you can like get inside their heads and understand their mindset. And I just feel like there's a lot more depth than in a graphic novel. But I still really enjoyed this and um, I'm happy I read it. I mean, I own volume two now. Like as soon as I finished this, I ordered volume two. So obviously I like it, but like my criticism of it is a criticism I have for pretty much all graphic novels. And that is, I feel like it's hard to really get depth and get me invested in them. The next book I read this month is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I posted a whole ass rant about this book and summary of the book too. In case you don't want to read the final book in the trilogy, you can just go watch that video. I pretty much did a whole breakdown of it. Then I gave my final thoughts on it. Um, this book is the last book in the Inheritance Games trilogy, which obviously follows Avery. She inherited $40 billion from some random person who, uh, Tobias Hawthorne, just like, why did I inherit this money? And in this book, you finally get the answer as to why she inherited the money. Um, I guess this will be my non-spoiler review because when I filmed that video, I just did all spoilers. Um, I didn't love the reason why she was chosen to like receive all this money. And I also didn't like that it wasn't that big of a deal. It's like they cared so much about why she was chosen. And then in this book, we're kind of focusing on a, a storyline with Toby. And I feel like if she happens across the information is why. She happens across the information, that information being as why she was chosen, but it just wasn't like this huge plot point either. And I just felt like, wasn't the whole premise of the first book, like why was this girl chosen? 
and I was just kind of let down by that aspect of this book. And also I hated Grayson's storyline in this book. Love Grayson in the first two books. I didn't like his storyline in this book, so you know. There's that one. I think I rated it 3.75 stars, I think. The next book I read, Bullet Train by Katori Isaka. I, this book is only on my radar because of the movie that recently came out with Brad Pitt. And I saw that it was based on a movie. I meant based on a book. And of course, before I watch any adaptation, I have to read the book first. So I read this book, which is definitely like nothing I would ever pick up on my own. This is definitely something I just would have never purchased or read by myself. And I am so happy that I did because it was such a fun experience. I rated this 4.5 stars or four stars, don't remember. I'm really into half star ratings recently, like 4.5. Like I used to never be like a 4.5, 3.5 person, but recently I'm becoming that person. Um, I'm like constantly being, oh yeah, no, it's like a 3.25. It's like a 5.5 star, like whatever. You know what I mean? Like I'm that person now. Bullet Train by Katori Saka. Um, so this book, you're following the point of view of five different assassins. And I say point of view because on the back it says there's five assassins on this train. No, there's way more than five assassins on this train, but you're just pulling the point of view of five different assassins. And their stories just kind of all intertwined together. It's a fast pace. It's a very like, not whimsical. That's not the word I'm looking for, but like I'm looking for like, it's like unique, I guess. I don't know which word I'm looking for, but it's like a very unique storyline, not whimsical, but that's the only word I can think of, but I know it's not that, but it's something similar to that. I took off a half star because I didn't necessarily love love the very ending ending. I thought it was a little open-ended, like there was closure, but not all the closure I wanted. Like I wanted more at the end. Like I wanted more of a wrap up than a brief wrap up. I wanted to like kind of see where the characters went than just kind of being like, one line sentences about where they were. The only thing I want to say about the movie, which I guess I knew this going into reading the book, is that this book is originally published in um, Japanese. It was translated. And so all the care, it takes place in Tokyo. All the characters are Japanese. But yet in the movie, I think there's one Asian person on the poster, like on the movie poster. And then the main character of this book is portrayed by Brad Pitt, a white dude. don't understand make any sense anyway the last three books i read this month is the summer i turned pretty trilogy which i actually filmed a whole rant review on um that i will be going over in that video which is already filmed it was filmed pre-hurricane but um, no power no wi-fi i haven't uploaded it yet but yeah i read the summer i turned pretty it's not summer without you and it will always have summer by jenny han i'm not really going to go into too much detail because if i do then what's the point of you watching the other video that i already worked on and filmed so that will be coming out soon. Oh, actually, those are not the last books I read. Don't worry, don't worry. I knew I was gonna forget, which is why I wrote them down on a piece of paper. Um, I have four books that I listened to on audio that I don't own the physical editions of. So let's get into it. The first book was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, which is just such an eye-catching title. It's like, Whoa. and then once you read the book, you're like, I understand the title. Cause it's a very like out there, like grabs attention title, because especially if you have a good relationship with your mother, you're like, what the heck? Like, what is it? And then you read it and you're just like, realize not everyone has the same experience as you. And um, it's just really insane what she went through with her mom. And my heart goes out to her. And like, it's just so wild watching iCarly when I was a kid and just like loving them, right? And loving their life and honestly kind of being envious of their life. like. I want to be on a Nickelodeon show. I want to be famous. And you see like that behind the curtains of it. And then you're like, wow, like you were actually going through a really hard time. Like you didn't want to be there. And then everything her mom put her through is honestly insane. And um, I'm just so proud of like who she is now and how she's recovered from every, from all the stuff in her past and how like she's moved on. It's just a really powerful and emotional read. And I really highly recommend it. I don't want to get too much into like the content of the book because I just feel like it's something you just need to experience for yourself and read. And the next book I read on audio, don't own the physical edition, is Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. 
this book was just okay. It was a very like forgettable romance. Honestly, the main character, she needs therapy. Okay, she definitely needs some sort of therapy. She just needs to go talk to someone, talk about her issues. I mean, we could all benefit from that, but especially her. Um, I mean, she like in the beginning of the book, right? There's Sam who is her like love interest in the book. And he like does like she thinks that they're, they're not really sketchy like offers to help her carry boxes inside her house and she's like oh my god he's a serial killer and she's like like kind of like looking at her window at him like i don't know just like girl like you're overthinking things you should probably talk to someone type of behaviors and i was honestly more invested in her brother's romance with his like girlfriend and his proposal with his girlfriend than i was in the two main characters honestly i actually genuinely liked everybody except for the female main character and I honestly can't even think of her name right now and I'm not going to look it up because I don't want to waste my battery. The next book I read is Crying in HMR by Michelle and I think her last name starts with a Z. I don't know what it is. Again, I can't really look it up at the moment. Um, I DNF'd it at 20%. I was listening to the audiobook, DNF'd it at 20%. I just wasn't connecting with it and I didn't want to force myself to sit through it. I'm sure it's a very powerful and moving story. It's just not one that I could personally connect with, so I DNF'd it. The last book I read, and this one I read on audio as well, is and Thank You for Listening by Julia Whelan. I love Julia Whelan. If I, she has made me listen to books that I wasn't really planning on listening to, but I was like, oh, Julia Whelan's narrator. Great. I'm going to listen to it. That's how I listened to Party of World by Abby Jimenez, which I rated five stars. Absolutely loved it. It was not really on my radar, but then I saw Julia Whelan was the narrator, and I was like, oh, shit. Okay, yeah, now I'm going to listen to it. Um, I love, I love her audiobooks. Okay, she, her voice is just like so soothing. Her voice is like real life ASMR, right? Like she's not whispering or like doing any like noises, but like she, her voice is ASMR, okay? And she wrote this book, Thank You For Listening, which is about, um, our main character, our, our main, female main character is an audiobook narrator. Her love interest is also an audiobook narrator. And I love getting the behind the scenes of what audio narration is like and kind of getting like the tidbits of information we do about the industry because that's something I've always been like really fascinated by like recently since I started listening to audiobooks. Like how do they produce them? How long does it take to produce them? Do they just like, do, is it like acting where they're like take one and then they read it and then they have to do like take two and they read it again and then they splice it together? Like, I don't know. I have questions. I'm curious. And I really liked kind of like the behind the scenes look into that industry as well as I love the female main character. I love that she, um, I love the representation of her too because she, um, had an accident and she wears an eye patch and I kind of just like love that aspect to it where she's not in that like traditionally like Instagram model pretty like I don't want you to bring like Kendall Limited she's like this Instagram model pretty like Instagram baddie bitch like super skinny huge butt and like her lips and like you know what I mean like this girl like wasn't like your traditional romance heroine and I absolutely love that I love the representation of it I love the two main characters everything about it was a fun amazing. I know Julie Willen has another book, My Oxford Year. I want to read that too. And I really hope she keeps writing because honestly, listening to her book, it honestly felt like an Emily Henry book. I don't know why I was like getting Emily Henry vibes. Like I felt like it was an Emily Henry book. They have very similar writing style, very similar storylines. And I think it's because there's so much more than romance books. They also have these other backstories to these characters and these other storylines to these characters that are just about more things than romance. Like in Beach Read, we had the whole storyline with Gus and the cult. And then um, in Book Lovers, we had the whole storyline between um, our main character and her sister and their relationship. And uh, yeah, so really enjoyed Julia Whelan's book. Thank you for listening. Um, no, thank you for writing it. And thank you for narrating it. And thank you for all the books that you've narrated and that I have loved. So that is the end of this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Hopefully when I have better lighting, hopefully when I have power, the sun is going away. It is getting darker in here. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.